All right, so we're talking about sets of measure zero and content zero, which is really cool because this is sort of one of the most important ideas of measure theory, well, having measure zero. Um, content zero is not really something that's talked about much in measure theory, but whatever. In any case, um, so prove that this does not have content zero if AI is strictly less than BI. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a finite cover. So in order to have content zero, we need to be able to have a finite cover whose total volume is less than epsilon for any given epsilon. And so what we're going to do is we're going to assume that AI is less than BI for each I and take a finite cover and show that it's that the volume can't get as small as you want. Okay, so we're going to suppose that u1 through um is a finite cover of, and then the way we'll write this is um, just the direct product from i equals 1 to n of a i b i. That's A1, B1 cross all the way through A N B N. Um, this product symbol here is a little confusing because we also use this when referring to multiplying a sequence of numbers, sort of like how we use sigma for sum. But um, typically you can look at what you're taking the product of and it should be clear whether you're doing multiplication or taking a direct product. So here we see these are intervals, and so it doesn't make sense to multiply intervals, um, but it does make sense to take direct products of intervals, and so that's how we know that that's what we're referring to. Okay, so as in the proof of theorem 3-5, we know that for all i, if we take the sum from j equals 1 to m of u, j, i, upper, oh, ooh, I forgot a sentence. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to write, we want to look at what the interval is at. So this is a, this is a finite cover. And we assume that finite. whenever you take a finite cover, the sets that you're using to cover are rectangles. So we're going to write uj as the product from i equals 1 to n. Again, this is a direct product of uji underline and uji overline. Yeah. Okay. So now, as in the proof of theorem 3-5, we have that the sum from j equals 1 to m of the distance between u j i upper and u j i lower, I'll just call it that instead of overline and underline, must be greater than or equal to b i minus a i, and this must hold for all i. And there's sort of a a verbal argument given in the text, um, but I think that this is easier to see as like a visual argument. Um, and again, this is in the proof in the textbook, so you don't need to go through what I'm doing right now. But let's say this is u1. Let's say this is u2. So u1, the left endpoint will be um, that, and the right endpoint will be that. Same for u2. Let's call this u3. Then let's call this u4. So if you look at the dis at the distances between the endpoints of all of the u. Um, of the UIs, then that has to be greater than the distance between AI and BI. Because what you could do is you can break the interval between AI and BI up into these things. You can look at all 
distances between any of the endpoints that are in any of the UIs and add those things up and that must be less than the sum or less than or equal to the sum that you obtain or if you take all these intervals and add them up first of all on one hand you're going to get precisely bi minus ai and on the other hand it's going to be less than or equal to and in this case strictly less than what you get when you sum up the distances between all of the uis okay so that's just sort of a visual argument for this okay so thus what we can compute is the sum from j equals 1 to m of the volume of uj. Okay, so let's see how big these uh, the sum of these things is. So this is precisely equal to the sum from j equals 1 to m. Now the volume of uj is going to be uj is the direct product of uji under through uji upper and you take the direct product over all i's and just we know the volume of a rectangle you just take the distance between the endpoints and you multiply them together so here we're using the multiplication product from i equals 1 to n uji upper minus uji lower um, and then here we can switch the order because these are finite sums and finite products we can just switch the order uji upper minus uji lower but now if you look at the sum from j equals 1 to m of uji upper minus uji lower we just proved that that's always going to be greater than or equal to bi minus ai so this is greater than or equal to um, the product multiplication from i equals 1 to n of bi minus ai. And then we're done because now we know um, so what this means is that finite covers of that set that we're looking at, the product from i equals 1 to n direct product I, a i b i. So finite covers of this have volume have total volume at least this as you would expect And thus, they in particular cannot be arbitrarily small. And so, if you choose some epsilon, so for example, if you want to make this maybe a little more uh, neat, you could say if you choose any epsilon which is between 0 and multiplication from i equals 1 to n of bi minus ai, then there is no finite cover of the set which has volume less than epsilon. And thus, the set does not have content 0. If AI is strictly less than BI for all I. Because if AI is strict if AI is strictly less than BI for all I, then this pro then this multiplication from 1 to n of BI minus AI is going to be strictly positive. However, if e if any particular BI minus AI is zero, then this product is zero. And so I guess we, um, so I guess from, from that, using this argument, that doesn't necessarily prove that if AI equals BI for a particular I, then the set does have content zero. Um, I'm pretty sure that has to be the case because, 
um, it would have measure zero just by um, like simple measure theory arguments. And if it has measure zero, it has to have content zero. Um, so yeah, but the problem isn't asking us to prove that. So even though we could, I'm just not going to. Um, I know maybe like a mathematician really would want to be like, oh, I really, it's we're so close to proving this even stronger argument, so let's do that. But I mean, this is this is an exercise, um, and I'm just focusing on the exercise. So yeah, the basic idea here is that we're just taking that one part of the proof from theorem 3-5 and we're just extending it to Rn because theorem 3-5 only applies to R. Um, and in fact I think more things are true here like the um, I think the idea here is that if you take a direct product of sets which do not have content zero then the resulting set does not have content zero. And I think that's what this argument is really, or this exercise is really trying to get at. Um, and what what you do to prove that is you just take the argument, uh, or you, you sort of can take the proof that the thing um, doesn't have content zero in a particular um, coordinate, and then um, use this multiplicate multiplicative argument about how you find volumes of um, rectangles in higher dimensions. Um, but in any case, uh, we've done all we need to do for this exercise, and so we are done.